Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 300. And five. Please turn to it. Page number 305 and today is our lesson number 73. Problem number nine is what we are about to solve. Problem number nine, six, seven and eight that you see there on the page. We did those problems yesterday. Problem number six, seven and eight. Problem number nine. It says a nursing student is purchasing books and supplies for the upcoming semester. A set of scrubs, we are told, she's going to pay $27.95. So $27.95 for scrubs, we, they go on to tell us that she's going to pay $150.25 for the math book, she's going to pay further $215.16 for nursing book, $195.15 anatomy books and the question simply is which of the following sorry uh, question simply is which of the following is an accurate estimate of the cost of this cost for the semester which of the following is an accurate estimate they don't want they don't expect us to figure out the exact answer we are allowed to estimate here so that's exactly what we're going to do here but we don't need their permission even if they had not said we, would, we still would have estimated it because that's what we always do because trying to figure out the exact thing takes too much time. So scrub is $27.95. We're going to pretend it is $28. $125.25 for math book, which we're going to pretend is $150 even. $215.16 for the nursing book. Let's round it to $215 even. And $195.15 for the anatomy book, which we're going to keep it as $195 and we're going to drop the 15 cents. Let's add them up. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 plus 8 is 18. 18 means 8. Carry 1. 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. 16 plus 2 is 18. 8. Carry 1. And we get 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So we get a total figure of $588 all we have to do at this point is to look at the answer choices and pick one answer choice that comes closest to it and the first answer they give us is 580 and the next one is 700 and they keep on going up 580 is the closest one the answer is A answer is A let's go on to the next one problem number 10 problem number 10 is a silly question They just want us to subtract 7,535. They want us to subtract $72, not dollar rather, but 72 from 7,535. And all, and all that they're hoping is that you're going to end up making some careless, predictable mistake. Don't do that. Take your time. Okay, take your time. 5 minus 2 is 3. That was straightforward. Now this is where the things get prickly. As soon as you, as soon as you have to borrow one. Always make a habit. As soon as you have to borrow one, always make a habit of changing this number right away. 5 becomes 4. And that one we go, we're going to borrow and give to this guy and it becomes 13. 13 minus 7 is 13 minus 7 is 6. We know that because 7 plus 7 is 14. So therefore 7 plus 6 must be 13. So that's a 6 and that became 4. That's what we're done. $7,463 and I do not know why I keep putting dollar sign on it. That's it, $7,463 is the answer, and that answer would be, you see all the answer, excuse me, all the answer choices are very close to each other, you have to pay very close attention, 6,463 is what we arrived at, and that's answer choice B, that's answer choice B. Let's do the next one, number 11, the last one. In number 11, they are looking for decimal equivalent of of 
a percent decimal equivalent of 3.2 percent let's do it together shall we if you recall we did a very similar problem in the previous exam I don't know if I should look for it right now because I probably when you look for something in a hurry it's very difficult to find it oh I found it right away what do you know what the hell on page number 64 on or rather on, on day 64 on day 64 on page number 256 we did the problem which was very similar to it which was number 10 it's very similar to it except one key difference one key difference was that in problem number 10 they were looking for the percentage equivalent of a decimal they had given us they had given us some decimal amount and they were looking for the percentage equivalent here they're doing just the reverse here they're looking for the decimal equivalent of a given percentage but they are very similar concepts this is something we did on day number 64 so if you have not watched the video compare this question question number 10 on two number two page 256 with this question you will see the similarity and we're going to do the exact same thing that we did before which is to make up a simpler version we're going to make up a simpler version ask yourself ask yourself what is the decimal equivalent of 10 percent how do we write 10 percent in decimals well 10 percent 10 percent is written as as you know is written as 0.1 and how did we arrive at point 0.1? Because you see, percent, the word percent, you see the word percent means, exactly what it says, the word percent literally means per 100. Percent means per 100. Per 100 or out of 100. That's what percent means. 37% means 37 out of 100. 4.7% means 4.7 out of 100. This is 10%, which means 10, 10 out of 100. And what do you do when you have to divide 10 by 100? What do you do? Well, you take your 10, you take your 10, and you move your decimal place. Decimal place is right here. If you're going to divide it by 100, the decimal place is going to move two places to the left, 1 and 2, and it ends up here, which is why 10% becomes 0.1. In decimal, 10%, 10%. 10% in decimal becomes 0.1. We move the decimal place in two places. Let's do one more. Decimal equivalent of 25%. Again, 25%. 25%, we know. We already know the answer. We know it is 0.25. The question is, how did we get it? Well, we take our decimal and we move it two places. We move it here. And it becomes 0.25. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. How about 50%? 50% of course we know is 0 0.5. And how do we get 0 0.5? Again, we take our decimal which is right here, move it two places to the left, and it ends up here. Here, they're not looking for 50% or 25% or 10%. They're looking for 3.2%. 3.2%. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take our 3.2%. 3.2%. We're going to take our decimal, watch what happens, we're going to take our decimal and we're going to move it to the left two places, one, two, the decimal is going to end up here, we need a zero here. So what do we end up with? We end up with 0 0.032, 0 0.032, there you go. In other words, 3.2%, 3.2% after we move the decimal to the two places to the left, it ends up being point it moved here point zero three two percent uh, point zero two point zero three two in decimal three point two percent is point zero three two that's all I'll see you tomorrow okay bye now